CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Welcome, everybody. My name is David Morgan. I'm Arlington's environmental planner and conservation agent. The July 11th, 2024 public meeting of the Arlington Conservation Commission will be closed, uh, sorry, will be conducted in a remote format consistent mm-hmm. with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, which extended remote participation in public meetings to March 31st, 2025. This meeting is being recorded and the recording may be made publicly available. All meeting materials are found on the page that I've just linked to in the chat. Please note that the Zoom chat feature may be used for questions and comments that contribute to the Commission's procedures, and if it's used otherwise, it may be disabled at the Chair's discretion. A public comment period will follow each hearing. The Conservation Commission encourages attendees to ask questions and offer comments during the public comment period. Chuck Turney, our Commission Chair, will facilitate tonight's meeting, and each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted with a roll call vote. And before I turn it over to Chuck Foley, I am going to say good night to everybody. I had COVID and am going to take the night off, be with my family, who you can probably hear in the background, who have also all had COVID. So we're going to take oh, care of one another and uh, see you at the next meeting. Um, Thanks all. Over to Chuck for attendance and agenda review. David, hope everybody's had a speedy recovery. Thank you. Take care, all. Bye. Bye. Okay, take care. Okay, so here we go. Uh, So I'm just going to review the agenda. So we're going to start with administrative um, review the minutes. And um, so those are the minutes for June 20th, 2024. Then go on to correspondence and administrator's reports, 66 and 66R, 66 Dudley 993, um, Mass Ave. These are for enforcement orders with an update from the Water Bodies Group. CPA, if there's one, park and rec, and then go on to a certificate of compliance for 14, 114 and 116 Milton Street. We have uh, the Medford Boat Club, which has continued for tonight's hearing. So if you're waiting for... Um, DEP file number 910363, that notice of intent has been continued to our August 1st meeting. And then we have a request for determination of availability, <laughs> request for determination of availability on 24 Sheridan Pack, and then a second RDA uh, notice of intent for 18 Hamilton Road, and then our last Hearing tonight is uh, Thorndike Place, but it's already been decided and accepted by the applicant that we will be continuing that also until August 1st. So with that, I'll take tonight's attendance. And I know that Mike Gildas game is not here tonight. So Nathaniel Stevens. Present. Susan Chapnick. Present. David White. Here. David <clears throat> Kaplan. Present. Brian McBride. I'm here. And both uh, Elaine Coleman and uh, Sarah Alfaro Franco are not here tonight because they have other things to do. I think I think Sarah's sick. So with that, we're going to move on to the minutes of June 20th, 2024. And uh, Susan's going to help us with putting that up on the screen. Okay, let me find them. Um, here they are. Can you see them? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, I drafted these minutes. I only got some, um, light edits from Nathaniel and they're in red. So you can see there, um, just some very minor edits, uh, I don't think there were any questions, Nathaniel, just little edits, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I believe I believe so, but maybe towards the bottom. Yeah, let me go to, to the bottom. And where well, he added another reference material that I forgot. 
and that was it. No, I guess that was it. Nope. So I guess well, I, did, I guess I did okay. The only thing I did want to point out, if you didn't get to look at it, um, Dave Kaplan is. It's the first agenda. Right. Uh, it's hearing, it's yeah. Medford Boat Club because we had asked them for some things. We asked for more information on the aquatic herbicides proposed and you suggested that Solitude provide this information in a table. Um, and I just wanted to make sure I got your thoughts down correctly, Dave, um, or if you wanted to make any edits there because we're, we're giving that to Solitude to make sure they can give us that supplemental in information. Yeah, I think that captured my comment pretty accurately okay. um, from what I can recall. Okay, sounds good. Um, then I guess I did okay. So somebody make wanted a motion, to motion to approve the minutes as edited. Thanks, Nathaniel. Is there a second? I'll second. That's Dave Kaplan. Um, any further discussion? I don't see any hands up. I'm going to take a roll call um, vote. So Chuck Taroni. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. I guess I can vote yes based on that note uh, from last week, right? That right. Have, Even I if have, you weren't there, you're allowed to vote. I have yeah. I have confidence in the note taking. So yes. Okay. Thank you, um, Dave Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And I myself, Susan Chapnick, says yes. So. Okay, Susan, can you put that um, yeah, clear let me, screen? Yes. Let me see if I could stop sharing. So where do I do <clears> that? <throat> It says share. How do I stop share? Stop. Go to the top of your screen and a, a, a pull down menu may appear if you hover at the top and it should say stop sharing towards the top. Not doing that. Mm. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, there you go. go. Oh, I did. I do it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. So moving on to our next uh, correspondence uh, received all is available to the public for a full list of correspondence, contact the conservation agent at the link provided in the chat. Notable correspondence includes feedback from Mount Gilboa, which David Morgan will uh, review with the consultant next week. Over 100 response weighed in on the survey and many more by email. So if you want more information on that, reach out to David Morgan. We don't have an administrator's report tonight because David has left and uh, we're just going to move on. And so our first item under number two discussions is 66 and 66R and 993 Mass Ave. It's an enforcement order. And so I'm just going to read what I have here. So 66 Dudley needs to have a survey uh, date in hand and a restoration plan by July 24, 2024. These are notes from David. Uh, that's the supplemental deadline of our August 1st CC meeting. The plan has to include removing all fill in the floodway, all floodplain, and revegetate the jurisdictional disturbance areas within or with approved native plants. And if that does not happen, otherwise the commission will start fines on August 1st. Um, the commission must also decide on next steps and update the enforcement order with the details for David to send out. So we are here to look at the enforcement order and to talk about um, a site visit that happened uh, with some of the commission members and we'll have a site update but there's also 993 Mass Ave. They should also have a survey or at least have located a plan. Uh, David said he's not under the opinion that they're responsible for submitting a uh, restoration plan. So with that and with what David said, and I'm, I'm wondering before we get started here that uh, what David is recommending is to remove all the fill material within the floodway and the flood um, and the FEMA flood area. So it, I'm just wondering if that's where we're heading with this 
with this enforcement order or if other commissioners want to weigh in who've been out there and uh, want to say something about that. So that would be my first, my first question. Uh, I, I don't know who's been out here in this group. I was out there a couple of times. I know Susan's been out there and Nathaniel's been out there. Um, but what my concern is, is that um, I don't know when this happened. I don't know when it happened next door or down the street or whenever, but the bank at the back of this area has some trees in it. They're not too mature, but some of them, some of them seem to be. And um, I'm wondering, you know, what we're going to receive from this. But I guess the first step is to uh, find out where the commission wants to go. And I don't, I don't think we've addressed that. We've just been pushing forward to try to get uh, some sort of uh, plan to move forward, but I'd like to know what the plan is. So if any commissioner wants to speak out that has uh, something to say, Nathaniel, I see you raised your hand. Thanks. Yeah, I agree with you, Chuck. I think uh, you were on the site visit with me in December. We made some preliminary asks uh, to the property owner and said that you know, we would have to decide and discuss fully with the commission. I don't think we've ever had that full discussion uh, to help define about what our what our ultimate end goal is. I, I believe what we asked them to do was sort of the minimum start of that, uh, if I recall, installing um, sort of a slight berm, pulling some materials, some like a grill and some chairs and things further away from the brook, maybe planning to do some plant, a few plantings along mm -hmm. the edge of the brook there. So I agree. I think David Morgan is, frankly, um, uh, you know, I, I think I think he's wanting more, perhaps, than maybe the consensus of the commission. But I'm not I'm not even sure where we what our consensus is. So it's hard for me to even say that. But I think he is taking the the the, the I'm not going to say the, the most stringent. Well, maybe it is the most stringent view of based on his analysis, removing more than perhaps others of us. I guess myself, I can only speak for myself. What I was envisioning might happen. Um, there, I do, and I'm I'm trying to find. We received recent correspondence from a neighbor who sure that's me. West, okay, uh, Kathy Lynch, who's here, and I just I have pictures because uh, I have, have those pictures cause if be, you want. Yeah, I would like to hear from her what she can tell us about what happened when vis-a-vis -vis the filling. Clearly, the filling that happened in the northwest, sorry, uh, southwest corner of the parcel, which is next to her property. And she reported in her letter, and I think to Susan on the site visit that he, he's been filling more, it more, in more flooding. Our... I'm sorry, if you can wait, please, to when you're oh, called sure. um, by the chair. Uh, thanks on that. So I would like to, you know, Chuck, hear from her to explain what those photos uh, show so everyone's clear on that and really point out when that whole wall went in and when the most recent filling happened. That's, I'd really yeah. like to hear about that before I can uh, say more of what I'd like done. And Thank Chuck, you. if you could put the pictures up, that would be helpful too. Yeah, Susan, I'm wor I'm working on it. I'm uh, I can just do that. trying to get them. No, no, no. I got it. I got it. Just okay. give give a bit of time here. <laughs> uh, all right. So here we go. Um, and there's you are. Okay. So there we go. So I'm going to share some photos, and um, that I received. Yeah. Okay. Can everyone see that? Right. Yep. Yep. All right. So this is, uh, I guess, uh, Millbrook is is here, and and here's sixty six and sixty six R. Is that is that correct? Um, yes. I, I lost your name. It's uh, Kathy, Kathy Lynch. Maybe Kathy. for the record, yes. Kathy can state her name and address. Hi, I'm Kathy Lynch. I live at 76 Dudley Street in Arlington, right next to that property. I've been in this house my whole life, uh, 54 years. Oh. And um, he started filling in. He, he bought the property about mm, over 20 years ago. When he first moved in, he built that wall between the two yards. And he also built the wall along the brook. But I'd say um, during the past decade, he started bringing yard waste back from his landscaping jobs and filling, filling, filling until it got to be street level and left us down below. He, he approached my mother at one point, my late mother, and asked her if he could start dumping the fill 
in our yard as well to bring it up. And my mother said, no, because we have a shed with a, an access door in that lower part of the yard and we wouldn't be able to get to it if it was all filled in. Um, so now we have this horrible flooding, as you can see, every time we get heavy rains. Be before, when it would flood, when I was a little kid growing up here, it would the brook would overflow, but it would spread out evenly between the two yards. Now he's up there and, and I get all the flooding in, in my yard. Hmm. Instead. Yeah, Chuck, I, Chuck, can I you show the other pictures, pictures as well? Yeah, yeah, I was just going to ask, are the other pictures uh, coming up, but they're not. Okay. So... Um, you might have to share one at a time. Yeah, I think I have to. Yeah, here's the next one. Yeah. So this is that's my shed in the, the left corner. And the brook never went up that high when both yards were the same level. What dates were these? Um, these were taken at that um, storm we had on, on a Friday about a month ago. It was an afternoon storm. It, um, I don't have, let me let's see if I have them on my phone for the exact date. Oh, very recent. Yeah, it was it was June, I believe. Let me see if I still have the date on my phone here. Um, June. I don't. I'd say it's within the past month. See the ducks and, swimming around. They yeah, like <laughs> the ducks. Don't yeah. like it. You a, have your you have your own pet ducks. I do. <laughs> I actually I do. They the. Mothers bring babies every spring and I take care of them and feed them. I currently have 12 babies all grown up. <laughs> They're happy, but I'm not happy with the flooded yard. <laughs> yeah, it when seems did like you've done a... Oh, sorry. sorry. Go, go ahead, just, Nathaniel. Thanks. I was going to ask, when do, do you remember when the fence went in, the wooden fence? Um, I think around 2017, he put the fence up. Originally, when he first bought the property, I think it was around 2000 or the early 2000s. He did build a wall. When my former neighbors lived there, it was just like a rundown old rustic chicken wire fence. So when he bought the property, he built the stone wall, but it was still low land on either side of the wall. When he built it up to that height within the past decade and his yard was that much higher than mine, then he put the fence in. I'm pretty sure it was around 2017. Okay, thank you. The fence went in. And then in terms of that stone wall that you say he, he put in, <laughs> Did he yep. put that in all at once, going all the way down to the river, or did he build that in sort of in increments as he went down towards the river? He took his time. I think, I'm, if I remember correctly, as I said, it's been almost twenty years now. I, maybe it, over the course of the years or two, he did it, and he built the wall alongside the brook against bro both our properties. And he said, "Oh, this will help us from getting water in the yards," because he used to be my land landscaper. So we figured he knew what he was talking about. And we agreed to let him build the the fence the wall along the brook um but apparently that and wasn't the case do you, do you have a photo of that wall along the brook that you're talking about or maybe um i'd have to go out in the yard and, and take one i can send you one it's, it's so it's yeah, not i don't think it's shown one. in the yeah. photos that you sent yeah it's, it's not oh, it's not as high as the wall between the two yards okay it's just basically stone <clears throat> it's not held together with cement or anything he just packed a bunch of stones together so when he installed the wall did he then slowly fill behind it or or did he fill behind it immediately behind all the that stone the stone wall no the the filling of his yard on, on the left there um he yeah. did that i'd say within the past decade but little very little by little what what he used to fill it in was waste he brought back from jobs that he had done i see okay well, the so there's all sorts of things in there i mean this you know plant waste the soil, probably rocks, concrete chunks and everything that he filled. And then when he got it to the level he wanted, he added soil and smoothed it down and put the rocks on top. Were the what were the yours at one time the same height? Yes, both the ads were the same level as mine back in the back and up until when he started doing this about a decade ago, both the ads were at the same level. Okay. In fact, he covered over there was a drainage pipe coming from the Dudley Street storm drain, going right through the middle of his yard. Um, because I remember seeing it, I used to play in that yard when I was growing up and he totally covered that over with his mm. fill. Mm. It was like a trench right through the middle of the yard from the storm drain. Uh, when 66, so uh, I'm just gonna take this back over and then everybody who wants to speak, please raise your hands and we'll recognize you individually. Um, so, when uh, this before this work happened, how mm -hmm. far up when the when the Millbrook flood, how far up 
to this point here, which I guess is is where the hill or there's a break and slope in that area. There's a little slope, yeah. There's a slight slope. Um, so years so, ago, and first of all, the flooding might happen once a year, if that, and it would usually be when you got one of these flash thunderstorms when the water really came down and the brook ran high, and then it would maybe go to um up to the where the shed started maybe at, at most but it was because it was distributed be evenly between the two yards that's why it wasn't quite as high now with it all being in my yard it goes up beyond the shed you can see the um water line where the debris is um at the most even in since he owned the property and wasn't filled quite that high it might go up to that shrub that's on the left hand side but it never went up beyond the the shed was not in totally encompassed in water years ago Okay. So, and so when the fill came in, now it's all the way up to almost the front of your, of your house, you know, that, at that's least. That's the shed. No, my, my house oh, is that's the shed. lower yard. My upper yard is fine. I've never had water in, in my okay. house area. Yeah. Hmm. You can see the rock line there in the lawn, Chuck. Yeah. I do. Debris. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that, <laughs> I thought that was part of the house, but it's the shed. Um, and I noticed that you know, you've done a lot to try to prevent water from getting in there. You've it looks like there's something rubber, or some sort of uh, sheathing on there that uh, prevents yeah, that was the my water. handyman did actually, and it wasn't for the water. It was um, because some animals were getting under there, and I didn't know what it was. <laughs> uh, but hopefully, it hasn't really helped with the water because I I store um, barrels of mulch in, in underneath that shed, and when the water gets high like that, now it actually causes the barrels to tip over and the, some of that brown stuff you see is the mulch that floated out. Hmm. So 10 years ago was when the fill started happening. Is that what you said? He did it gradually, but by the time he was up to that level, I, I think I'm trying to think if it was around 2014, 2015, when he approached my mother about wanting to fill in our yard. So I think he was getting to the level he wanted on his yard at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, because that would make sense with, with him putting in the, the the fence when it was like around 2017. So I think he knew that he was going to run out of space in his yard for fill. And that was why he asked my mother if he could start using our yard. And then the floodwaters did not go up this high before this uh, fill was put in place. No. Um, in fact, I think I have pictures. The first time it ever got that bad, there was a um, bad storm in the spring or summer of, of 2017 after i think it was after he had put the fence in and that was one was like flooded all at the end of dudley street and everything too it was crazy storm that was the first time we started noticing it really super high levels of, of water like that much higher than it had been in the past do you know if there was any uh so you've been there a long time and yeah. it's it's uh so that kind of institutional knowledge is great I'm just yeah. wondering across the Mill Brook, was there anything, any work that you remember that happened on that side to raise the banks? No, I don't think so. I know the the folks at Mill Brook Condos at 993, they have a major erosion problem in the parking lot. I don't know. It's been going on for years. I don't think it's tied into this because it's on the other side of the brook. Um, but I haven't seen any work being done on the other side of the brook at all that would have caused this. It so the bank is the same. Years ago. Yep, the bank is the same height as you. Uh, as you remember when you were a kid. Yeah, that's well, what, it's, it's steeper now due to the erosion. It's really bad um, under their mm -hmm. parking lot at Millbrook Condos. There's like, my mother actually called their attention to it because I know some of the people on the board over there. It was just like this big hollow hole that kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. We, we said to them, you know, someday that might be a sinkhole in your parking lot. I think they're aware of it. Okay. Are there any other questions from commission members? David White? Okay. About 15 years ago, the condo did some bank repair further downstream. It should be in our records. Yeah, downstream. How far downstream, David? Do you remember? Down where the near the building itself, where the stream okay. narrows a bit. I'm sorry. So down by uh, Grove Street? Are you down that far? But down no, the. The building would be just at the end of the parking lot. So um, it's That's the parking lot. Oh, the condo yeah. building. Yeah. Condo building. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Building. Thanks. Condo building. Yes. Any other question? Yeah. No, I was just going to say is there anyone, is there anyone for the property, is the property owner here who wants to give them the opportunity to respond to the photos and what Kathy Lynch just had to say? 
I think they should be uh, the, uh, have the opportunity to respond to that. Yeah, sure. If, yeah. But I don't know if um, that here. His name is Robert Castelluccio. If, if he's on there, I don't I don't see him listed. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yep. if you could uh, use the raise hand function, if uh, if anyone would like to speak, could you use the raise hand function oh. and uh, we'll recognize you? Sorry. Seeing none. Okay. Oh, Chuck, I have a, I have a question. Um, oh, sure. Brian McBride? Yeah, just from the pictures, it seemed to me, and I, I can't quite remember December when I saw it last, that more work had been done on the property uh, in question in, in flattening it out and maybe expanding that parking lot. I don't know if Kathy or anyone else can verify whether that's true or not. It sort of, not not, res not restoration work, but, you know, f further enhancing the... Uh, the, the blacktop or the, the the paving there. Yeah, about um, a couple. Of, I'd say it's been in the past few years. He, I don't think he paved it. I think he put in like the crushed stone or something, just to make it yeah. so he, he's got somewhere to park his vehicles on a flat surface. And then he put in like a little area where there were some chairs and a table. I think for his workers to sit when they were done for the day. But I mean, but it nothing in the past. And then before it was just dirt. Yeah. Nothing in the past six months or so, though. No, I don't think he's changed. I think that it's been like that, I'd say, for the past couple of summers without any change. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, I see that Susan Shabnick has her hand up. Susan? Yes, thank you. Um, we do have, do we have pictures from the site visit we just recently went to, Chuck? I think Nathaniel took them. I think those might be helpful. Because I understand Brian McBride's confusion because I went back and looked at the pictures that we took on our site visit back in 2023. And we had at that time asked the owner to move some debris and take the gravel from the edge and, and just do a little bit of stabilization there, remember. But it looks like the gravel then went, you know, leveled out on the whole thing. So I think that's what Brian's talking about. And I kind of agree with him um, that even though there was a little bit of this, you know, fix up work, there was also more. Um, Chuck, I have the photos yeah. if you want me to screen share. That would be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so that's the wall. That's the wall. So this is the this is Kathy Lynch's uh, yard wall. It's yard. dry. Right. Correctly. So I'm standing and sort of along the street in front of her house and looking over, and here's the fence that she said was put up in 2017 and the area. But you can notice here, just sorry, as an aside, while we have this photo, is see there's a wall and then the different type of rock material closer to the stream bed. It looks like different rocks, which suggests to me that they were built, in, uh, built, in a, or built at different times. Right. Um, and then walking, this is stand, this is looking at, I can't, my cursor's not showing up. I can barely see it. But where this board is, I believe is, I don't think it's this board show, it's not this here, but I think it's behind this shrub that's behind the the the, the board, the um, big concrete block there, mm -hmm. or a granite, granite block. So that's looking at that. So this, I think, is the area that at least I would like to see pulled out. And then this is the area, I believe, if I recall correctly, in December, there was a grill sitting here and some chairs. We asked the owner to move those back. Or, And this actually might be on the condo land. We're not sure yet. And here we are looking back again towards Kathy Lynch's hat. I think that may be the back of her house, certainly her yard. And there's the granite, the granite block that I was referring to earlier on the right. And then the piece of wood that you saw before that's, and Millbrook is in the distance. Similar shot. Again, similar shot, just broader view. And there's Kathy's shed. And then this is looking again back towards her, um, up on her yard and the uh, Rider Street. And then this is looking, this may have been one of the photos or the photo that Brian had a question about. Yeah. That, that's the one that made me feel like it had expanded, like the seating area and the patio area had expanded rather than there was remedy for the, the banking. I don't know. 
Yeah, it's hard to tell unless we had it side by side with the ones that we took in um, 2023. And I don't know that we have the same angles, mm -hmm. but it, I had the same impression, but I'm not sure if it's because they took all the vehicles and stuff out and the stuff so that it looks bigger or it really is yeah. bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, the, Actually, I the do have the area, um, yeah, the yeah. area is definitely not bigger. I mean, we have the border that they were supposed to put in. They did. It looks to me when I look at this picture, it may be cleaner. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about if the entire paver area was there, but now it's finished off. They're using it as a patio. That border of um, stone, cobblestone, has been put in, like. We asked, and it looks like there's some additional planting because it didn't look that nice when we first went out there. It's, so they've so maintained, the yeah, yeah, they've maintained that edge, and they may may have added to it based on what we asked for. So that's what I see. Okay, I I think what I saw, Sorry, Daniel, there's... if you have those pictures from eleven fifteen or something like that. No, this is this is from our this is our from our December site visit. Oh, okay. You know. There was there was one that I went on with David White. Right. Yes, I did not go on that. I did not go on that one. Well, uh, I have I have two pictures from that, but let me see yours then. And, okay, so this was the sharing. area. But it looks like it is the same, except up near the street was more dirt, and now I think everything's gravel. Right. So mm. important and just to note this, so this green turf or rug was pulled out. Yes. Oh, I we think. can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not <laughs> seeing this. Stop sharing here? and sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. The old okay. one. Yeah. Let me try that again. Sorry, That's I thought okay. it popped up. No, I, I always have that problem too. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um there we go. Oh, uh, so that was pulled out that um that's astroturf or something. Right. Yeah. So astroturf was pulled out and then and also the, these blocks were pulled out. There's plantings here, but there is no it is notable that this curbing was there previously. Yep. Uh this again is looking this is the fence. Kathy Lynch's yard is over on the left. We're looking up towards um Ryder Street up that direction. And these were pulled, this was pulled back, this grill. This might be the table that we see in the other photos. Yeah. And this area, I think, is down closer behind the shed. This is on the eastern part of the lot. Yeah. And I didn't take, sorry, I didn't take any pictures of this area when we were out at the site most recently. And I think this area. Mm. And this is the corner where I'd taken pictures. There's a, currently a board and the concrete bl uh, granite block is there. Mm -hmm. And that's looking at Kathy's yard. So hopefully that reminds people what it looked like in December. Mm -hmm. Here's a video. I just did a 360. Hopefully people won't get won't get dizzy. See that dirt in the back there? I don't think that's there anymore. But I'm I don't know. That might be outside of our jurisdiction. Well, no, it's not because it's 200 feet, right? All right. Yeah. So hopefully that reminds people of what it looked like. And this is behind his shed area. Mm-hmm. It could be that the uh, astroturf was removed and beneath it there were always pavers and therefore it makes it look like the pavers extended, but uh, it was really a cleanup perhaps. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Well, whether they were there in the first place or put in later, I, I'm, unless it lets us know, but the stone looks clean because there's no gravel in between the little pieces of stone. So that must be new. Um, and the paver patio is probably probably some part new also, but it was a disturbed area and then disturbed through this violation. So I think the question is, David White has his hand, but just give me a minute, David. I think the question is, what's the extent of the um, restoration that, we're, that we want to ask for, or do we want to establish the extent of the jurisdictional area first through those surveys that were requested? David White. I just checked the town GIS map for the area. It seems to sh show a much 
lower, much less fill than we have at the present time. I'm not sure when the GIS system was put together, but it shows a much more sloped area than we have at the present. David, can you screen share that? Yeah. Do you have it up on your screen? I think I can. Can I share a screen? Yep. Uh, yeah, you can. Give me a second. Um, Stop sharing. Keep David keeps jumping around. All right, David, you should be able to go now. We'll see that. It's coming. Yep. Yep. So seems like there's a. There you go. Because gradual slope down towards the water. Right, and the slope is similar, on, as Kathy Lynch testified to, that the slope is very similar on her lot as well. Yes, very similar slope. David, can you um, and zoom in a little bit? A second do here. There. Thanks. That's helpful. Um, although it does indicate that there's some sort of wall or maybe that's where the drainage was. Kathy, do you yes, remember what... Was the drainage lot you were to, uh, talk spoke about a drainage pipe that was buried? Was that how how close to the house at sixty six was that? It was like in the in the middle of the yard. If you oh, okay. where the wall is, if you walk toward the house, it was like halfway. It was in the middle of the yard, and it wasn't buried. It was an actual trench because I remember having to jump over it. Oh, uh, I say mm -hmm. okay, yeah. All right. And then it empty. It went from the town. It's probably parallel to where the storm drain is on Dudley Street. Yeah, in front of the property, and then um, it must have emptied out into the brook. The stuff from the storm drain. Okay, thanks. So, David, then, at the bottom of that base, when you look at the base maps on the left on the layers, can you click the twenty twelve one? Do you see that over on the left? Yeah. Does that change it? Oh, that just shows you the aerial image. Oh, the aerial image versus the. Grading. And actually, while you have that up, maybe you go to 2018 and we can see what changes there are. Mm. Now you, you can see stuff in that southwest corner. There is more debris, more visible. It does look like piles of stuff, as Kathy mentioned. Right, and it doesn't look like the, the, the stone wall between the two properties was all the way done in 2012. Go back to 2012. Let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. Looks like it went halfway. Yeah, I mean, it, it more or less, I think, honored the property line. It looks like it's sort of, and then they've extended that wall down to the brook, which is the right. encroachment on the the Mass Ave property. Right. So I, I, I think it makes sense to, you know, yeah, wait until we understand the extent of the resource area, um, but to the extent that the fill and the resource area impact is an encroachment on the, the 933 yes. property, then, you know, I, I would, I would request that all of that encroachment be restored. Um, if not further out, if there are um, increasing resource area impacts on the 66 Dudley property. Right. David White, can you put can you do the floodplain? I think there's an option for the floodplain there, right? I think we can find it here, yeah. Well, let's there you go. FEMA flood. Yeah. Yep. Almost in line with the at least the, the assessor's parcel data. Right. Which we know is not accurate. Yeah. But it does show there's the blue, I think, is the flood, uh, the flood plain, and then the striped is the floodway. Yep. That's right. Regulated floodway, red stripe. So that's the 100 year. Right. So it's, I think, right. So I, th I think it's ascertaining getting, getting the flood, that flood plain put on a plan to know where that is. Cause I agree that that corner should come out, should be cleaned out to, provide to restore the flood storage. Yeah. In the floodplain. So where the, where the blue uh, is 
and then you have the floodway, which is the hatched. I think there's a lot of work that can happen on the property in that in that left hand corner looking at the screen. But as you come down towards the structures, it gets really tight up against the bank. And I'm concerned about that area. Um, digging and you know altering additionally altering what's there, causing more disturbance. But I agree. Um, I agree. It, it seems like there, you know, there's an there's an opportunity to do some work in this area and maybe do a lot more than I'm thinking about. But but I see but I see the area that's between the two uh, properties that stands out to me as an area that that it should be addressed, at least from this flood map. Yeah, I agree, Chuck. And I think that maybe that that yeah, that blue area could almost be that you could put, they could pull out material and then compensate for the fill closest to the shed. Yeah, as you say, downstream in that area, because for the reasons you say, we don't necessarily want work to be done there. I think in fairness also to the property owner, it's very tight down there and he needs to get to his shed to run his business. So I think it's a balancing, a bit of a balancing here. So I think if he, if he provides additional compensatory flood storage up closer to uh, Kathy Lynch's property in that corner, I think that I'd be amenable to something like that. And what would that look like, um, Nathaniel? Like just, just as w would that be a a compensatory flood storage area, like a big basin rain garden or something? Or how do you how do you do that? Kind yeah, of? good question. Right, because you don't you want don't want bare soil, but you also I guess suppose don't want I guess you need vegetation that will right. survive the floodplain. It'll mm -hmm. hold things together. So. Right. Right. Okay. So that would be part of the restoration. Right. Yeah. So get the compensatory flood storage, so the grading has to change, but then also the revegetation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the area where I didn't want to go. I wanted the commission to do what we've just done, but not not talk about how to have it happen. So we've identified an area there that needs to be restored. Well, at least me and Nathaniel. We're going to see what the rest of the commission think. And then with that, we could ask them to put it on a plan and to talk to a consultant and make a restoration plan and bring that back to the commission for an area that now has been defined. And it seems to me that it would be the flood way and the flood zone that's on their property. And to me, somehow I'm thinking it would almost be the same elevation as 66 and 67 uh, Dudley, Kathy's property. That's 76. 76. Se 67's across the street. So, okay. Chuck, I agree that we don't want to say how it's going to happen, but I think we have to decide what's going to happen. Um, it's in the, restoration. In the restoration. We need to, see, right. And I think, and the property, the rep, the, Property manager for the condos was asking this question. I think it was a fair ask. We've got to ask them. We just we just can't say come with a restoration plan. We've got to give them some guidance, some criteria as to what's going to be acceptable because they're going to. There's a thousand ways you could do this, and I think that the commission has to provide some further guidance, essentially, to say mm -hmm. what we want done. I mean, and 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 also to make this a valid enforcement order. You got to say restore it to do what, you know, type of thing. And do we want it? We've got to give some criteria uh, for them to work towards. And I also thought we were going to ask them through the survey process or whatever, we, we need an amount of fill that, that was applied in order to understand what the compensatory flood storage should be, no? Right. Yeah. So I think we have, fortunately, we have the elevation of Kathy Lynch's mm -hmm. lawn next door. So I think even we could say bring Just it down to that, that. that grade okay. would be enough, yeah. I think, yeah. to, to save yeah. the money um, yeah. and to yeah. save time, frankly, uh, to do yeah. that. I'd be comfortable. I'd be comfortable with that. I don't know what. No, that makes sense. Things. That actually makes sense. Um, 
So why doesn't the flood zone, the floodway and the flood zone have an elevation that they can restore the floodway, restore the the flood zone in this approximate area, tie it back into the bank as you go further downstream, vegetate it for storage, you know, vegetated with native plants that will, uh, you know, like getting wet every once in a while. Right. Yeah, I think, I think that, you're is, right. Is I, that enough yeah. direction? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what the delta is between, you know, Kathy Lynch's base elevate, lawn elevation and what the flood plain and floodway elevations are. So we have to, I think we, sh we need to see those, you know, see a survey and understand mm -hmm. if, if they'd be removing more fill that get them lower than the neighbor's property, or if they'd be removing less fill and they'd be higher. So, I mean, to avoid that, I think tying it back into the elevation of Miss um, Lynch's property is probably the the cleanest yes. way to do that and have to to bring us back to some um, you know historical point. And so someone mentioned earlier that we didn't want to disrupt the business beyond what's necessary. Is is that the limit on the area near the sheds that this would be done to the extent possible without hampering his business or something? Like, where do you stop? You could go all the way, right? Right. I just, um, if I can screen share, I just outlined, I took a screenshot and I could mark it up. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop sharing. If it helps, just to make it, see if I went on the same page on this. Everyone, everyone see the, I just took a screenshot of what David had, the GIS. Triangle. Yeah, and then I I outlined in red the area that I, I was thinking of would be where we'd be pulling fill out of and doing some restoration. Mm -hmm. And are you, are you above the uh, the blue flood zone for bank? Uh, there, th this I'm not sure. This boundary here I'm not sure about. So I was just gu I was guesstimating. So yeah, it may it may go down here a little bit more, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, we we can always sort of align that, but it's with, just, with the with the aerial and get yeah. a better sense of like because we've done that, you know, aerial investigation where we've seen the land use change over time, and then we sort of pick a point out where, yeah, you know, we can determine the development where the development extent was, and work our way back up uh, up from there. And um... I think that's where my concerns about excavating uh, are and so that that's a good uh, that's a good uh that's a good area right there to work on the other thing that i would want to have fixed within this project is there's an opening and i don't know if it's there now i didn't go to the last meeting but it's right before the shed as you're going downstream and to me, it's an ideal spot just to just to plow all the snow into and dump it into Millbrook. Mm. So there's an mm. opening mm. that doesn't have brush and it doesn't have a barrier. So I'd like to have a barrier put back up there uh, to protect the area from where Nathaniel's drawing ends to over by the shed. And so this uh, area just to make sure there's no runoff or untreated runoff going in there. So treatment is a possibility. I don't know how they do it. So this this area here, Chuck, I think. Yeah, you had that. Yeah, right, yeah. right in there. Yeah. Yeah. Where the exactly. Double, where the double blue line is. Okay. Yeah. So, um... Nathaniel, what is the uh, blue circle you drew in the triangle? Uh, the blue understand. circle here was a, so. My thought is this blue circle here would would essentially make up be be the flood storage that's oh. occupied by this area here. So okay. any any floodplain that he's filled here could be comp com compensated for up here, or even you know, or even further. I mean, it could it even, could even go like this or something. Right. But cool. that was the idea. Rather than pulling it all the way back here for the reasons Chuck said and and, and I and I had stated, just move it all over to the by the compensatory flood storage over on this side of the property. Mm -hmm. This is just this is to show that it's beyond the existing floodplain. And so it's new floodplain that's being created, essentially. 
Does that make sense, Brian? Yeah. Sure does. Perfect. So Chuck, how do you propose we go from here? Do we do we take Nathaniel's screenshot and write a few bullet points and and make the recommendation, you know, change the um, enforcement order or, or what do we do? I think we need to update the enforcement order uh, so that uh, David can update it. And and I, this is this is where I'm stuck. I don't think we need to get a plan and then look at the plan and then and then take the next step. I think we should just work with this and tell them to now you need to go and get a professional and we can you know and then do this restoration project and then provide plans and a planting plan for the commission to review before it's you know before the meeting starts and i guess we would keep it in a um in the enforcement order so i don't have the language down but uh create flood storage tie it into 76 dudley elevation to restore the floodway and the flood zone so that's generally what we were talking about yeah i can work with you on language i, I think but i think we do need to have a vote to amend the enforcement order Okay. As discussed, I make a motion. Okay. To... Yeah. So just quickly, I think summarizing summarizing the what the asks is to prepare uh, what we'll call a restoration plan, which will will pull the fill out of the southwestern portion of the property uh, where the existing flood hundred year floodplain is. Yes. Um, and then to and existing floodplain to about the center of the property, and then provide compensatory flood storage north of of the existing flood plain uh, that compensates for the fill of the floodplain that's closer to the shed. Uh, provide a so planting plan, vegetation and vegetation plan to plant the flood plan of the flood storage area once it's created. And then I think Chuck's ask is where the two blue lines are in the area where there's the gap behind the shed to, and Chuck, what did you want a fence there or a berm? Mm. I can't remember. You also yeah, wanted to I, want, I wanted leaves. something pretty permanent, like a, like a wall. <laughs> right. And I think he said he could tie the fence in, I, I think, cause he has that existing fence and there's, and there is no, if my memory serves correctly. Yeah, was it a picket? There's a, a chain link that he could tie into. So I think you'd probably want a solid, would we want a solid fence? Because chain link, you can push snow through. Yeah. And over too. Yeah, yeah. you can. Mm. So. Yeah. I, I, and I would, I would just, you know, say provide fences and all, whatever it is going to be, but prevent, um, you know, untreated runoff from the driveway area uh, from uh, entering Millbrook. So okay. can, I, can I just, sorry, I'm going to back out a little bit. Um, the compensatory area that we're proposing that's, you know, on his property, but further north, I mean, that's a significantly higher elevation than the actual floodway and floodplain. That would be a lot of material sort of removed and it would create like a weird sort of, you know, tying that, you know, the contour, the low contour of the floodplain into that. I mean, mm. do we want to understand what the, that ask is a little bit better before we put it in the enforcement order? Um, I'm just, I'm just concerned it may not be constructible or it may be challenging to do so. And if we just, Maybe, uh, I mean, he, he Dave, he could go like this. Maybe would work, right? Yeah, so I know. Maybe... I know we're trying to, you know, minimize the the impact to his property and business, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if that, yeah. So I, so from the pictures, it only looks like maybe it, maybe we don't carve that out. Maybe make it more of a general ask that you know, right? Consider a property that you're not currently using that can be, you know. That uh, for um, compensatory flood story. Yeah, I agree. I like that. Yep. 
Right. Yeah, and good point. we really, at some point, need to decide how much compensatory flood storage we're okay with. Because right. really, it's supposed to be like, you know, as, as Dave pointed out, it's supposed to be compensatory flood storage at the same elevation, which we're not going to get on this site unless you do disturb, you know, his, his make him tear up his patio and, and all that. So yeah. if we're not going there, we need to think about, I, we don't have to put in the enforcement order now, but we just need to think about how much we're going to be okay with at different elevations. I agree. Yeah. And I think the flood, the restoration plan needs to show the 100 year flood plain and yes. floodway on it. Right. And maybe top and top of bank would be helpful. Yes. Are we ready for a motion or is that, uh, is that I coming? I think Susan had a motion, which was heavily amended, so maybe she should restate her motion. <laughs> okay, I will okay. restate. I will restate my motion the way we have recently discussed, which is to prepare a restoration plan that shows the top of bank floodplain and floodway that pulls the fill out of the southwest corner to around the center of the property and provides compensatory flood storage to mitigate where the flood storage lost. Um, in parts of the lot that are not going to be, um, where the fill is not going to be pulled out, um, provide fencing or a wall to prevent untreated runoff and snow from getting into Mill Brook. And um, the vegetated restoration plan, did you want to say anything else about that or just leave it as I don't know if you want. No, to I think that. you're right. No, the, the flood yeah. storage area needs a, a a vegetation plan of some sort. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. The flood storage area needs a vegetation plan. Okay. Yes. So that's my motion. Second. It. Okay. So that was Susan, and who did second? Uh, I did, Nathaniel. Okay. Thank you. So it's David White. Yes. This is a. Uh, vote to approve um, the updated enforcement order. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Um, now we're not updating the Condo Association's enforcement order or are we? Oh, okay, That's right, that was for 66R, so let's discuss yeah. that next. Yeah, so 993 Mass Ave should have a survey or at least have a location plan. Um, uh, and then David said he's not uh, he's not proposing that they submit a restoration plan for their section of this property. So how do we tie 993 Mass Ave into this? I think uh, it probably makes sense to have the identical enforcement uh, identical enforcement order i'm thinking and then it's just who does it is yeah and actually yes and i right and i would i guess i would make a further motion to amend the enforcement order to say that the restoration plan should show the uh, property boundaries on it yes okay. um i think there may be an opportunity here to really maximize the restoration and the and the room removal of the fill material, as I mentioned earlier, you know, as part of the encroachment resolution. So to the extent that the work is happening on the 993 property, I would like to see that um, as restored as possible to the floodplain elevations or maybe that, you know, Kathy Lynch's. So is that, is there, is there opportunity here? I want to survey the other commissioners to think you know, should we be more aggressive in tying restoration in with the encroachment resolution? Mm. So that was where I was concerned about the bank of the existing, the existing bank along Mill Brook, and where we put in the blue circle to create a wall and prevent driveway runoff. So that's really tight in that area, and it's also really tight to 
where this gentleman works with his sheds and whatnot. There's really not a lot of room to get in between the existing house, a shed, and then do some restoration. But that's not the that's not 993's property. I think I think what Dave Kaplan is talking about is just the 993, the condo property, no? No, no, no. I, th I, th I think that you're going to find out that that work, or that's, those that structures is their are, property? are on their property, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I think this is the property line. Oh, that's a bad color. Sorry, you can't see that, can you? Okay, yeah. I can't see it. Hold on. Oh, I only have yellow highlight on this program. Hold on. Let's see if I can get a better pen color. Yeah, I mean, I think I could agree with the extent that's practicable, but, but you know, taking everything into consideration, uh, maybe we're just getting a little bit more down by the bank, down by the stream. Mm -hmm. Chuck, do you want to recognize Kathy? She has her hand up. I, I'm on Sorry, Zoom. I I, I'm mm -hmm. on an iPad. I can't find the button to, wet, to raise your hand. Um, there was a property marker, both my lower part of the yard close to the brook and his his yard close to the brook actually belonged to 993 Mass Ave. There was a um, a stone marker, which was built over by that wall he built between the two properties that the fence is on. Oh. My, my yard is actually like a pie wedge. So all part, of, part of the fill that he put in his yard is, is on Millbrook Condos 993 Mass Ave's property. Thank yeah. you. In this purple line, sorry for the my color sense of colors, but this purple line, I think it's the, the the assessor's version of where the property line is for 993 Mass Ave. So I think the condo property is yeah. south. Yeah. The, yeah. the marker was kind of parallel to my shed. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that'll be, yeah, over yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. Right there. So, <clears throat> so Dave, so your point, so I think Dave Kaplan's point is to try to restore this area here, which I think is where the compensatory flood storage was, but am I missing, Dave, your point, I think? It's hard to see your cursor, uh, yeah, Daniel, sorry. but um, yeah, and I, I talked about just below that. So are you talking about that whole area, David, or are you talking about the red area or where the wall this, the, and the low? Yeah, the, the developed portion, I guess, of that area that, you know, that was, that has been filled in, that's been modified by the activity of the 60, you know, six owners um you know to the extent where the the new portion of that wall jets south towards the brook and the gravel has been filled in adjacent to the patio like that's where i think you know we really it but i i just again i think yeah you make a point i, I don't know how close to the brook that is i'm having a hard time kind of envisioning how far his development encroaches into you know, the actual bank or towards the bank. You right. see Nathaniel's line as it hits the building. Oh, yeah. Not that first street. Yeah, there's, they walk through they're that area. Here. It's about five foot wide and, and you're pretty much touching. I I think that you could just say is, you know, as much as practical in that area. Yeah. It, it makes sense. There's going to be something gained. Yep. I, I, and I, and I agree with like, I think the extent of, so it may, we're probably saying the same thing and sorry to add confusion to this, but yeah, I agree with sort of Nathan's, Nathaniel's, sorry, delineation of the, you know, in the red area. So I think, yeah, that's where we can really try to try to maximize the, uh, the amount of restoration. Happening. Right. And we, we neglected to say that we're expecting a survey or is that in the enforcement order already, Chuck? Uh, well, we're expecting a plan that shows us what we're asking for in our and enforcement order. And everything. And if, so, yeah. yeah. So we could always modify this again if it comes back that we're, you know, off in our thinking of where the property line is and where the encroachment was. But at least that's the intent. So I think that that's. Oh. Yeah. I think the uh, two separate property owners might want to get their own survey. But right. um, yeah, so it's uh, almost. 10 past eight. Okay, I was just going to ask, um, just give you uh, the, the, be sure to give the condo association an opportunity to speak if they have a question. While we're here yeah. Can you, uh, whoever has the screen share, can you drop that so I can start yeah. seeing people? Uh... Yeah. Sorry. All right, it's me. There you go. Okay. Is anyone here from 993 uh, Mass Ave would like to speak? Just use the raise hand function. 
is there any abutter here from Dudley Street or Mass Ave that has a concern about this project that would like to speak? Is there any more comments from the commission or uh, a revised motion to tie 993 into the uh, enforcement order? I'll make, so a we motion, just, yeah. I'll make a motion to revise the enforcement order for 993 uh, identical to what we did for 66R. And incorporate David Kaplan's uh, comments about uh, I guess that would be south, trying to create uh, storage downstream uh, towards, I guess, towards that corner of the house. I think he backed off from that a little bit, but Dave can speak. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't trying to extend the area to, I guess, I guess the southeast would be like towards the shed where you're proposing the, the fence, the wall. Is that is that what you're talking thinking? Yeah, the source. Yeah, I... I I'm I'm in agreement that we sh it's we pick a point like midway on the property I think as we discussed earlier and and um and not go too far southeast. Okay. Um, with that, uh, it was this seconded by Susan. I I'll second it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Make makes it clean. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. And they Nathan need, uh, I just want to make it clear in the public record that we had said that um, they need to get us materials by the 24th of July. I'm not thinking that's going to happen because we changed the enforcement order. I don't know. It, so right. I can't say that. They, I would just say, you know, that's right. So, I, yeah, no, in fairness, since we've added more requirements, let's, yeah. uh, I'll make a motion to change that deadline uh, to submit the restoration plan with the information we just amended the order to add to, to ask for. To what do we want to say? Uh, August, second meeting uh, in August? A second meeting, yeah. So, when was that? Since? August 22nd. Second. That was late. Okay, so August twenty second. So a week before August twenty second. Yeah, that would be the fifteenth. Okay, to August fifteenth. August fifteenth materials due, and they need to show up at the August twenty seventh meeting, right? Well, they they will be discussed Present. at the fifteenth uh, at the August twenty second meeting. Yes, right. I think it's the twenty second, not the twenty seventh. Yeah. Yeah, twenty second. Yeah. It, oh, it's, oh, sorry. So we're not on the fifteenth. The common concept. Materials in on the 15th, discussion on the 22nd. No, wait, what are you looking at? Because I have that we're meeting on the 1st and the 15th of the month in August. Yeah. Am I wrong, Chuck? Are you looking at something else? That's what I have oh, on my calendar. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, so the materials should be in here on the 8th? Right. On August 8th, yeah. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll be meet talking on the 15th. about on the 15th, right. All right, so I make a motion to amend the enforcement order for 66R that the restoration plan uh, and other materials we've requested be submitted by August 8th. Second. Who seconded? David Kaplan. David Kaplan, okay. Uh, David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Susan Kaplan, Susan Chavnick. Yes. <laughs> Nathaniel Stevens. <laughs> yes. Dave Kaplan. Yes. <laughs> There's something we don't know about. Check <laughs> him when he says it. <laughs> oh, uh, so if oh. you did the vote, we also do need to do that for the nine nine. Yeah, I was gonna say make a mo once I start laughing at stop laughing okay. at track, uh make a similar motion for to amend the enforcement order for nine nine three mass F. Second. Kaplan second. Good. Oh, there you go. Make sure. it easier. Yeah. Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. Ooh. All right. Kathy, thank you so much for showing up and letting You're us welcome. know uh, all that information. We appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. That was very helpful. Thank you, Kathy. Would you like me to photograph the, the wall um, closer to the brook? 
Sure. And splash sure. the photos. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. We'll do. Thank you. Have a good okay. night. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you too. Bye. All right. So. Next item on our agenda is uh, Water Bodies Working Group, and David White will give us an update. Update. Basically, we're going to meet next week rather than today. And the first hand of the water chest at the res occurred this morning. Oh, nice. Three people and over 200 baskets of water chestnuts were collected. And the res is looking pretty good, relatively. But still a lot to do. That's and great. No other, no word other other water bodies seem to be okay as far as I'm as far as I know. All right. Is there another uh, another event planned that you know of for hand harvesting water chestnuts coming up? Oh yes. Let me give you a date on that just a second here. It was August something, right, David? With Myra? Well, there's several events. I think yeah, there's one okay. actually this month on the twenty fifth. Oh, okay. And you bring your own, you bring your own craft to get out there, or well, we have canoes. We oh, have canoes. canoes, and um, so just show up and with with energy, and and this, they'll this put you to work. Is organizing things. Mystic River is organizing things, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's really just, just nice. come and show up. That's sounds great. This next one's on the twenty fifth at two p.m. To show up with a lot of energy and help uh, the reservoir with aquatic invasives. Is that all you have, David? No, that's all for now. Well, maybe more next time, but okay, it's thank so you. Far. Uh, we have CPA committee and an update from Brian McBride. I don't know if there is one, Brian, but uh, yeah, say that I, th I think I think before I left on my trip, I gave an update. They did. We did have a vote with the CPA, and they did approve the Hills Hill uh, project. Uh, there were some verbal commitments to pay attention to the habitat and the the walkers and so forth. Nothing written, but some verbal commitments by the uh, by the PRC uh, representative. So I'm I'm hopeful that will take place. That's great. Okay, moving on, we have uh, Park and Rec Committee, August thirteenth, two thousand and twenty-four, is the next meeting, and Susan Chabnick. Is going to update the commission regarding the last meeting uh, she attended, depending on what they discuss at their next meeting, which is on August 13th. Uh, it'll either be Susan or Nathaniel. So I get uh, I get to stay home another night, which is great. So I'm glad that you guys are uh, battling over that. So Susan, can you update us on the last meeting for the Recreation Committee? Sure. So they uh, I attended the meeting of Tuesday, June 25th. Um, and I'm just going to update on things that are pertinent to the commission, not everything else we talked about. Um, <clears throat> the Friends of Spy Pond uh, got approval to put more signs up about revegetated areas along the bank, which is great because it helps with bank restoration. They have a QR code on their signs, which is awesome. It's something we should think about doing um, when we want it, when we put signs up for the Conservation Commission to have more information. I think that's great. Um, Good idea. Yeah, yeah, something to, to think about how they did that and, you know, connect in with it. Um, the director of recreation, our, uh, Joe, Joe um, is leaving. Connolly, yeah. Yes, Joe Connolly. Um, he's leaving, actually, as of this week. And um, Nao, uh, Na Na Natasha Waven, who's from the, the Board of Health, um, is the interim uh, director of recreation until they find a replacement. Where's Joe going? I think he's going back to his town, but I'm not sure. I didn't hear. Did you, Chuck? Yeah. Closer to where he lives. Oh, did I, you? I, did, I heard near I didn't Andover. Hear. Yeah, I didn't hear anything about him coming that's, to Reading, yeah. so that's his town, but that, no. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Um, Closer to where he lives. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So the. Um, the Monotomy Rocks Park um, design is getting finalized. It was pretty much what we had seen, but there are some tweaks. And I originally that was supposed to come to us today for a permit, but I think it's coming at the next meeting. Is that right, Chuck? I saw some emails. About yeah, Monotomy I think it's design. coming on August first. It'll be that. Okay. It'll be that meeting. There's a okay. kind of like a prep meeting just to see what they've done with the right. 
Morgan, myself. I don't know if Susan's going to show up, yeah. but we're, we'll we'll look at what they're doing. We already saw this a couple of times already. It's just a new design in the same area. So, right. right. And then there was some discussion about McLennan and dredging, and they didn't understand what was going on, and what is the DPW doing, and what is Park and Rec doing, and it was just like a discussion about this. I'm I'm not quite sure where it came from. I, I think heard that they clean the drain at McLennan. Okay. Water levels gone down. Okay, I don't. I've been there to check myself, but that's what. I... Yeah. So I just I just explained to the the Park and Rec Commission. Um, that there was a CPA study that's been approved to evaluate what maintenance should be done there because um, they they weren't really, it wasn't on their radar screen about the CPA study and that um, and the maintenance of the detention ponds and that this is also required under the MS4 permits. So I just said, you know, don't worry about what's happening there right now because there's going to be a study and a plan and a, you know, so anyway. They were concerned that ARPA funds were being used, but I don't, I don't think that was the case. But that was it. They were concerned that ARPA funds for the study or for the dredging? For the dredging. Who knows yeah. about that? That's a, for the study to figure out. But I said, you know, I, I said, we have to wait so, for the CPA study. Yeah. So their, their concern was based on the fact that you're not allowed to supplant the maintenance, typical maintenance that the town's right. supposed to do. Right. So. Right. That's where their concern was. They, yeah, yeah. It's not that they don't want the dredging. It's no. probably they're just making sure that it's, it's coming out of the right CPA, th CPA <laughs> funds are uh, right, right. being allocated correctly. The right. funds are used, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was it. So um, I think Natasha has her work cut out for her. There's a lot of stuff going on in Park and Rec. You know, Robin's Farm, things I didn't talk about because they, they're not in our jurisdiction, but they're doing a lot. So. We're balls in the air. So anyway, either myself or Nathaniel or Chuck will attend the next meeting. <laughs> we haven't decided yet. We were going to wait and see what the agenda. We decided was. on one of those people not attending. Yeah, yeah. Chuck's not going. He, he, <laughs> oh right. Were, yes, you got, yeah, okay. I'll plan to go unless I'll have to talking about um, what you submitted. Right, right. So I did just for full disclosure, I did submit a letter communication to Park and Rec about my concern about heat of poured in place playgrounds surfaces. Um, that's PIP, Board in Place Playground Services. Board in Place, yeah. So they're supposed to discuss that at one of their meetings, and I don't know if it'll be on the next agenda. Yeah. I also great. sent it to the school committee, but have gotten crickets in response. Did you Did you also send it to Thielman? And after? town manager also got crickets. What about Jeff Thielman, who's on the Building no, Arlington High I School just, Building Committee? You. No, I didn't. Because that's a separate committee. That's a separate, yeah, that's a separate thing. So I just I just sent it to the superintendent of schools who that's the umbrella where all the playgrounds are decided what how they're getting renovated. School, schools, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. All right. So Susan, Susan's done. Okay, so let's um let's move on to our next agenda item which is 114, 116 Milton Street, Certificate of Compliance um, for this address. And I think we have, which I don't have David's paperwork, but I'm gonna say that David went through this. It was originally started. Uh, the process was reviewed by Ryan Clapp, who put some work into getting this up to date. And the commission originally was concerned about some of the, uh, trees. So in the latest correspondence, it was decided that one tree would be replaced and the commission would hold off on issuing the certificate of compliance until that tree was three years, three years after that tree was planted. Uh, we received an updated uh, letter of compliance from an engineer stating that the tree's been planted and they would like us to sign off on this project. So I don't think anybody here uh, went out to check out the project, but I do have a concern about the tree that's planted, and I'm just going to put it on the screen and kind of kind of go through this. I'm hoping that it shows up. Does yep. it show up? Yep. Okay. So um, now somehow I'm not seeing it though. 
We see it. It's the second okay. second page of the with the photos on it. Yeah. Hold on. Let me uh let me go here. There you go. Okay. So so what I'm seeing here is some can you see my cursor? Does that work? Yep. Okay. So I see some uh bark damage here and up here on these these uh limbs here, little branches, I see crown decay. And you can see over here on each one of them, they kind of have that. And I don't know if anyone wants to speak to that, but I was concerned about how long this tree will live. And I went back in the paperwork and I saw that this, this damage was on the original tree. And so it looks like, you know, it looks like it's spreading and there's certainly a problem here. The original picture looked a lot better. This is also a cultivar. It's Brandywine, Asa Brandywine, and it's cultivar of red maple. So I just wanted to bring that to the conservation's attention. I hope you can see everything that I can see. I'm also not sure if there was too much mulch piled up around it, um, but I think if we added the mulch, the core decay or the crown decay and this damage here. It's some topics to think about. And it was the one thing holding up the commission because that's what that letter said. <clears throat> so um I didn't I didn't see the original NOI. But I think the original NOI, I was looking at um Ryan's back and forth communications and the original so the original order had um, i mean the order sorry the original order had four trees required to be replaced and then um there seemed to be a problem with some of them so then they replaced two of them you know one with a plum and one with something else and then they had to add this red maple is is that and that's what we were waiting on I don't That's know what the one. death tree is, though. So I guess I'm confused. Or do we just take well, I was just and Dave's <clears throat> David's word for it that those were okay? Yeah, I'm I'm concerned about them, David and, and Ryan saying this tree is viable. Okay. That's that's my concern. And I, I don't know if David Kaplan has any comments on what he saw, or if he could look at the pictures and had his, on his own computer because they were maybe weren't so clear. But I mean, it's definitely stressed, but I don't. I can't speak to you know if it's going to survive in perpetuity. I mean that that condition. It's a mitigation planting, right? So there is an yeah. expectation that. You know, if it were to fail, even if we issued a certificate of compliance, that it would have to be replaced. No. Well, can we put that in the certificate of compliance? Could we put in the certificate of compliance that expectation or no? Yeah, I think so because I it should be in it should be the in the order of conditions. See, but I didn't have. Do did we have the order of conditions, Chuck? I didn't see that on. No, they, I don't think we got to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, so, it's in the order of conditions, and then we would. But it may not be because, depending when it was written, we're better about that now. But depending when the order of conditions were written, it might have just said three years survivability, not a continuing condition. So it's at least, was if it did, then we're fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say it was at least six years. But I, I, I don't, I don't. I wouldn't be a stickler if it wasn't in the order of conditions, if it wasn't explicitly in the order of conditions, because certainly it was implied, as David yeah. Kaplan just okay. said. It's mitigation. Okay. You can't just yank it after three years. Yeah. So, but we can make an explicit condition. And I guess I would do that. I'd hate to hold up the CFC further. I'd just say I would think that we would, someone would go, you know, check it in a couple of years. Okay. All right. So, do you have a motion that would include? A review in 2026. 
Um, I make a motion to wow. approve the certificate of compliance for the condition that the tree continue to be monitored. Um, and if it were to fail, it, it'd be replaced. Second. And a first and a second by Nathaniel Stevens, Susan Chapnick. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. So okay. just for the for, for Rebecca, Dave made the motion and I seconded it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Moving along, we have um our first hearing, which is DEP file number 91363, notice of intent for the Medford Boat Club. And they would like to continue and they sent a request to continue to July 24th. But our next, we don't have a meeting on July 24th. So we're gonna continue this until August 1st, which is our very next meeting. So I could get, I gave a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Was that Brian? Brian, Brian McBride. Brian did. Yeah. Susan Chapnick? Yes. David White? Yes. David Kaplan? Yes. Nathaniel Stevens? Yes. Brian McBride? Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Um, can I just say to commissioners, um, I found it helpful to look at the information that, that came from um, DMF. So there, there was some late communications from them, which I sent around. So you should look at that before um, the boat house comes back. Moving on. Our next uh, agenda item is a request for determination of applicability for 24 Sheridan Park. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Wetlands Protection Act and the Arlington bylaw for wetlands protection for a deck addition and existing structure at 24 Sheridan Park. Um, Vice Chair Susan Chapnick will conduct this meeting. Susan, please take over. Sure. Um, I don't know if you can put the plan up for me, Chuck. I don't know I can. if you noted that one. Um, I can. Okay, that would be great. Um, so... I will admit I didn't get to do a site visit for this. We were a little late with everything with, with Dave, David Morgan out being sick. Um, and it may happen. I, I feel personally I need to do a site visit because I'm concerned about making any decisions about deaths, considering we are also, we had also denied an RDA um, also on Spy Pond for deaths. So we have to be, careful and consistent in how we um, protect our resource areas on Spy Pond. Um, that said, um, I had questions about um, the spacings on the deck. It looks like what would be underneath the deck um, is part of it covered or not, because sometimes it's called a porch and sometimes it's called a deck. Um, and the jurisdictional area of the, which is the aura and a hundred foot buffer to spy pond, it's not clear on the figures where that is. Um, Chuck and I looked at it um, on an online viewer and it looks like it's pretty far out in the outermost aura within 75, the, the deck would be within 75 to hundred feet of the outer aura, but I can't quite tell um, it, it would be better if we had a site visit. I was also a little confused because this is 24 Sheridan Park, but the parcel is 31, but I, I think that's just the way it is. <laughs> that could be the assessor's plot. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's, Maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what happened there. So that little scribble there is where the deck's going. And, and I, I estimate, you know, it's probably, I don't know, 80 feet away or 85. It's not clear exactly. So I have a lot of questions. Um, and I would propose to the commission that we schedule a site visit so we can actually see the area. So I found these diagrams a little difficult to understand. Um, 
it looks like there's a handrail. There might be some stairs. I'm not quite clear unless somebody else understands them better than I do. I was going to say, there, it looks like yeah. someone is here, maybe from the applicant okay. or from the applicant, and yep. maybe answer some of those questions. Right. But I agree. I agree. A site visit might be good. Great. Yeah. So, um, so do we have somebody from the, yes, um, I see an Ashley Pitts. Oh, right Ashley. There. Okay. Sorry. I didn't see you right away. You may unmute yourself and ex maybe you can answer some of our questions and explain <clears> what, what's going on here. But just introduce your name, uh, name and address for the record, please. First. Hi, my name is Ashley Pitts. I am a resident of 24 Sheraton park, um, in Arlington, Massachusetts. And, um, to answer some of your questions, um, you asked if there was, if this was going to be a porch that was maybe directly on the ground or if there was something underneath. And there is, there is a, like a, an old patio that is underneath that has been established and is, is not changing at this time. Um, and then with regards to these, uh, descriptive photos <laughs> the footings yeah yeah okay so the um if you go up to the top one i believe this is just the layout like this is the house it says if you go up farther it says the house is here elaine sacco 24 sharing park existing house and then if you come to the house for the site visit you'll see that there is a porch and um Elaine asked that we ideally cut the porch into like two thirds of what is already existing. So that's the goal is to just cut off one third of the porch and rebuild the structure. So is the porch covered? No, it's open. So, so you're calling it a porch, but it's like a deck. It's just- Oh, sorry, yes. Okay, so yeah. So it's, and what is that? That's wood? It is wood, yes. Okay. So you're reducing it by a third? Yes. The existing deck? Mm -hmm. Okay. And are you constructing it the same way? Yes. It will be with different materials. And what are you using? I don't know what the material is called, but it it is like... A composite or something? Yeah, a composite. Yeah. It looks okay. Like a composite. Yeah. Okay. And do you know the spacing between the um the pond and the deck? <clears throat> no, the space. Well, that we'll need to know. But the spacing of the um of the deck um the deck boards. The boards. boards. Thank you. <laughs> I was losing and my. How mind. far apart they'll be? Yeah, because what we're concerned about is that water can go through them. That they're actually we consider the deck porous, so that okay. rainwater could come through. Um, though, if your patio underneath is impervious, that may not matter. Uh, we'd have to kind of see on a site visit what that looked like. The patio is, it, water can go through the patio. Oh, it can. Okay. Yes. It's just, um, it's very old cement tiles that are pretty worn down. And if you, when you come to the house, you'll see that they're covered in moss. <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that, but does water run through them? Yeah, hmm. I think so. So sometimes, if they're covered with moss, the water is only sitting on top because moss doesn't need a lot of soil under it. But anyway, I that's a site visit would help us. Water cliffs on top. Yeah, site. There's visit. never any water sitting at the patio. Oh no. Okay. Never. Okay. Okay. Um, but I believe that this porch will be, um like just completely connected because I think she's going to want to be able to walk out there comfortably and there won't be any gaps in between the individual planks. Would you, um, if we went, <clears throat> came for a site visit, would you have, you know, a, a brochure or something? Because usually they have spacers that they set up these boards with. Would you... Um don't have Maybe a brochure. You'd have a brochure or something, you know, or something you find online. Yeah, I could find a picture of okay. what her goal is. Okay, that'd be great. That'd be helpful. And then um, if we did a site visit, we'd also measure how far this would be 
from Spy Pond. So how big is the deck going to be when it's finished? I believe it's going to be the same length that it, or the same width that it is okay. at the moment. Okay. It's 12 um, by 16. Smaller in length. Okay. And are there stairs? Not coming from the porch. No. Okay. Or the deck, sorry. Okay. So you're basically in the same footprint that you already have in terms of width. Mm -hmm. Is that right? You're it's all going to stay the same. It'll just be a little bit shorter. Okay. And there'll be new material. Okay. All right. Um, do, is there anybody on the commission who has a question? Dave Kaplan, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, thank you. So I guess my question is, if you're making, it's going to be the same width, but you're making it about a third shorter, I guess, in terms of length from the house. Um, what are you doing with that underlying uh, material that's going to be, are you cutting that and removing it and replanting that, I guess, with, with grass? Or uh, what are you doing with the underlying porch material? Sorry, Ashley, maybe you froze. Yeah, Ashley, I think Sorry. you're oh, I there you are. connected. <laughs> um, you asked, what are we doing with the remainder of the space? Sorry. Well, so um, maybe I'm picturing it incorrectly, but right now I'm picturing an existing like porch or, or patio that you said that's made up of this concrete with moss. And you're building a wooden or a composite deck on top of that, but you're making it shorter. It's the same width, but it's a third shorter. What are you doing with that underlying porch material that's no longer going to be, that's not going to be covered by the new decking? Oh, we're, we're, the whole rest of the porch is being taken down. So it's going to be thrown away and then we're going to have the new porch. Yeah. So I think Brian, she's, she's got a deck. And then, and then that deck, she's going to take off a part of it. And then it's just going to be like that. But, but the concrete what, underneath is, is st staying, right? And what's underneath? Does, does the patio extend the full length and width of the current porch? It's longer. It's bigger. Okay. So when you take off that half or third of the deck, there's still going to be patio sitting there? Mm -hmm. Lots of patio, yeah. Okay. The patio takes up the whole walkway. There's a large walkway on the side of the house that goes up the stairs. And then um, just the, the porch itself takes up only a small area on the patio. And we're just going to decrease the area of the, okay. the deck. Yeah, no, I, I was just trying to get to a point where we could maybe confidently say that this was going to be an improvement over existing conditions, um, but not necessarily obviate no. the need for a site walk, but I, I, I'm a little confused. It does sound like a site walk is, is necessary to see what's there now and really understand what's going to be there. Yeah. I would agree. I would um, agree. And yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it, I had it, some questions. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, was, go ahead. Okay, Nathaniel. Um, I, uh, I was wondering, oh man, here we go. I'll just do it, Nathaniel, hold on. Uh, I was just wondering about footings uh, and that, that, um, sketch, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of, I, I couldn't understand what you were trying to show us with the sketch, but you're, but I'm, what I'm hearing is you're building this on top of existing pavers or something like that. And I'm just wondering about footings because there would be some diggings, digging with that. Are you anticipating digging new footings for this deck to support the structure? Yeah, if you look at the sketches, I believe that it would be, um, I'm not sure if it's like one foot or two feet. I didn't draw it, but um, there will be some digging to stabilize the structure. Okay. Yeah, it, it was just a, a, a little confusing. I think I would be most interested in finding how far away from the pond it is and the size, how it's attached maybe the, the footings, what you're doing with the spoils that come out of the digging area. Um, those are things that can come up at the site visit. So maybe that's the best next step. Mm -hmm. I would agree. 
any commissioner have to say anything else? Do we want to try to um, see when we could get a site visit while we're all together or? Um... Yeah, let's try that. It'd be easier than a series of emails. Okay. So I know Chuck, you're really, you're available more on Fridays. And on I Friday, yeah, I don't know if people are around over the weekend too, so over that's weekend. always an option. And then Dave, I know you're a Dave Kaplan, um, a little restricted, except maybe evening, early evening, or what's yeah, that? usually any time after three three thirty, I could could probably make it out um, in the afternoon. Okay. Um, and possibly on a weekend, maybe maybe this Sunday I have some time open. I don't think Saturday would be free. Actually, I have some time this Sunday if we do it early, not super early, so, but you know, not so do late, I. so it doesn't break the whole day up. How does that work for other people? I, I mean, have time get everybody that Sunday can... early. Yeah, and early for me, just That's so early. we're on the right page. I'm going somewhere at twelve o'clock, so okay, it's got to be between eight and you know twelve yeah. at least. Um, I shoot for around ten thirty. So, yeah. Uh, I won't be able to make it. So can folks take some pictures? Sure. Or, yeah, but happy to entertain another time, Nathaniel, too. So, no, it's a, no, go ahead. I, you guys have a critical mass. I, and I, try, I, yeah, with a couple of photos, I think I'll be fine. Just, you know, existing conditions, photos, right? Broad picture of the back of the house, what this patio looks like. Mm -hmm. Currently, yeah. Deck. yeah. Yeah. I, I think, guess does, does that work for the owner? Um, she will be here this weekend, but I think she's going to the Cape. Um, I will be here, so um, I can help with anything you need help with. So okay. does, does 1030 work for you, Ashley? Okay, great. So let's do that, and whoever could make it, um, that'd be great. And we'll take pictures, Nathaniel. Thanks. Okay, great. I think those are important for the file, too. Right. And then we'll need a um, a motion to continue. Uh, well, actually, I should open it up for public comment, but it, uh, oops, I forgot to do that. Um, is there anybody who would like to comment about this um, RDA was on call? You can use the raised hand function. I don't see anybody. So I will close public comment. Go back to the commission. Are there any other concerns? Well, can I get a motion to continue? Motion to continue this in, to August 1st. Great. Nathaniel? Any second? And that was Chuck? Yep. yep. Any further discussion? Nope. But then I will take a roll call vote. OK, Dave Kaplan. Yes. David White. Yes. Brian McBride. Yes. Chuck Taroni. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Susan Chapnick says yes. So thank you very much, Ashley, and we will see you Sunday at 1030. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And Chuck, Chuck, handing it back off to you. Uh, thanks. Um, our next agenda item is a notice of intent for 18 Hamilton Road, DEP file number 910358. The Conservation Commission is continuing the hearing for 18 Hamilton Road. I'm not sure um, uh, where we are on this project. I believe the Commission asked for some additional information regarding core logs, um, armored banking, native vegetation. And I believe that Carlton's here from Allen and Major. And uh, if you could introduce yourself for the record and bring the commission up to date with the project and the new submittals that you uh, sent over. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Carlton Quinn with Allen and Major Associates. I'm a civil engineer um, representing the client this evening. Um, I was actually not in the last hearing, but from my understanding, um, we provided a restoration plan for the bank. It's by pond for an area about 45 square foot that was eroded. And the commission, we provided some materials such as um, stone armor for the bank and some um, some 
still fence for the for the erosion control. And I believe the commission asked for some additional alternatives from those, and uh, we submitted a revised set of plans. Um, I believe last week, and which showed that, um, and a a narrative uh, was provided with that. Um, I can pull up the plans that we submitted um, if I can share my screen here. Sure. Could you, uh, yeah, show us the changes on the plan? There you go. Okay. Um, so this was the plan that was exactly the same as that was provided to you before. This is basically just the, the limits of the restoration. Um, the whole area is going to be revegetated um, with the planting schedule and shrubs and perennials have been provided on the plan sheets. Um, there'll be a turbidity curtain and there'll be some um, erosion control put around it during the um, site. So I think the biggest change here um, was the detail of how the bank is gonna be restored. Um, we did find a, um, what's called a grow socks. It's by Filtrex. It's similar to kind of a, um, a silt sock or tubular erosion control barrier, but instead of filled with mulch, it's, it's filled with a soil media and it's kind of, um, it's pinned back into the slope and, and stacked on each other, almost like a retaining wall. And then you can plant plantings directly into those tubes. I'll show you that detail in a second, in which they'll actually vegetate the bank to restore it um, in lieu of putting some armament. Um, so here's the details. So this is the original detail. Um, you can see the, the large stone boulder um, provided to armor, surrounded by some stone and some Marafi fabric, and then there was some plantings up on top, top of it proposed. So this is the new detail. Um, the The product itself is called Grow Socks, but it's basically a um, a tubular geotextile filled with a soil media, as I noted, and then it, it's wrapped in a geotextile, which is kind of pinned back, um, similar style as you'd see in like a, um, kind of like a, a Versalock wall that would have some geo grid pin back that they'll be, they'll put the first log in it, roll the geo grid around it, pin it. And then when the soil's put on top of it, it'll actually hold that geo grid in place, which will um, provide the, the, the sock itself stabilization. So it won't move. And then you come in after they're installed, cut holes in these and you put in plantings along them and, and the slope will um, vegetate. Um, I'm going to pull up, uh, kind of the, where is it? Objects. So, um, so this is just kind of one of their case studies here where you can see kind of a, in a road, this is, I think a stream bed and they lay the logs down. Um, they're wrapped in a geo grid and they come back and then this this one itself has a it has a pre seeded so it grows itself but we're actually going to put in our own um, plantings into this um, and you can see once it, it grows out it just looks like a natural um, vegetation depending on what you 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 grow in there um, those are the socks that's the geo grid and um, this is kind of how it's stacked. This is more of a wall. We're only going to be about three socks deep, so it's not going to be this significant. Um, you can see it post planting here with the, the loam and seed on it and the, how it grows in. Another restoration here. So this was an alternate we wanted to provide the board. Um, and uh, it's all been submitted and just looking for some feedback. Thanks, Colin. Um, one of the questions I had when we started this project is I know that there's a PVC pipe out there and on all the, all the plans it always shows that you're kind of extending out to that point. And I, my question I asked, uh, at the last meeting, same question, how far out and, and why are you extending out beyond what you need to put in this uh, geo grid fabric, this green locks uh, material, or are you just moving it out a minimal distance just to fit this in? So, um, sure, that's a good question. Let me bring the screen back up. Sorry. 
So um, the bank is eroded in this area here. We are just connecting the two banks to bring it to the same point it was before. We're not looking to push it in further to the stream edge. Um, it might show a little bit in here, but it will be also kind of, um, it'll have to be, when you install it, it'll have to be installed a little bit below grade. So you'll have to fill on top of it. So there might be an extension of three or four inches past the line, but that's all gonna be underneath the, the final grade. Was that, does that answer your question? Yeah, you're you're maintaining the existing bank throughout. It yes, seems that's the, that's the yeah. um, goal. Sure. Uh, and do you have a plan that would ensure that these uh, the plantings survive? Some sort of watering plan that um, you know you you have in your material to at least recommend? Because we you know obviously we'd like those to survive and. I don't think the project's starting now, but if it did, it would be a concern about watering. No, certainly, and and this project is professionally maintained, um, and and it will be part of the the management plan to to water those as there is. There's no irrigation going to be proposed out here, um, and you know we've we've provided plants that should thrive in this area. Um, so we're happy if you'd like to provide a condition that you know these plants, if they're not. You know, if you want to condition it that the we need to have order conditions showing that they've li they've lived for a season or two or three or whatever your standard process would be for a scope of this size, um, we're happy to agree to that condition if that's something you, you typically do. That is, uh, we do have a typical, uh, you know, uh, condition in our order of conditions. That's all I had. Uh, I'm going to go to David Kaplan at this time. Uh, thank you, Chuck. Um, and thank you, Carlton. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm not familiar with the, the grow socks um, system, but thank you for providing that information. Um, I had a quick question. You know, my earlier comment was about looking for the synthetic mesh alternative, uh, and you've addressed that and replaced that with the jute. But so a similar question I had on the the geo grid is that also a plastic that's going to be used to stabilize the the grow socks and and if so is there a a natural alternative that you can use to to help pin it down and let it establish um so we did look into that that was specifically what we're looking for as we went into this and looked for materials anything that would be in this sort of wet natured environment um that's basically you know rapidly biodegradable is not going to hold up enough to hold the slope together is what we found um we we did look for alternatives that were more natural we understood that you didn't have a you your concern was with the the geosynthetic but there was nothing we could find that we could guarantee would hold up to this environment you know and and stabilize this bank oh, uh, thank you for that um so and i'm looking a little bit closer it looks like it's just a media that it's filled with and you actually physically plant it or does it come sort of pre-populated with so so you seed? can do it either way um we've decided to buy it with just the media and we're going to plant it ourselves with our own plants we're not going to buy the pre-grass media one okay and was that was that included on the planting plan i didn't see anything additional that on the planting plan that indicated what was going into the growth suck um, I don't know if it's specifically called out, but I believe the the thought was that these plants themselves, some of them will be thrown into the the plant sock within that forty five square feet. Okay, so you you're not going to be changing the quantities or the species, and no, you're just no. going to use that existing material, that schedule, and plant some of it into the grow media. Uh, correct. Okay. And then the other areas will be there'll be a. Um, a wet seed mix thrown around the other areas between the, the plantings. Okay. And is that, is that indicated on the plan, the seed mix? Um, it is noted right here. Um, I don't know if the actual spec is on there, but I believe this would probably be a New England wetland seed mix that would be generally thrown in this area. Okay.
and all right well if you could you could just make sure that that spec is included and if not could you provide that we could come as a add it as a condition as well okay that would be appreciated if it could be a condition yeah i see okay. wet wet seed mix which i think meant wetland seed mix okay thank you uh, that's all my questions appreciate it. susan chapnick Thanks, Chuck. Um, I'm I'm not I'm I'm not a plant person per se, but it seems to me that these shrubs and perennials are not necessarily the best to go on the slope in the grosok. I would have expected there would be more, you know, weeds, grasses, kinds of things. I mean, maybe some of them could. So I'm wondering if you had a landscape designer or somebody look at this or could look at this and tell you what would grow in there on that slope being wet a lot of the time. Because I'm thinking that some of the things you have there are not gonna work. So I will admit I'm not a landscape architect. This plan was actually done and stamped by a landscape architect. She's actually on vacation this week. So I was filling in. Um, right, but I, but that was before you changed the grow sock, no? No, no, she this, she stamped this, this one. This is the grow sock plan. Okay, but but these look like the planting schedule didn't change. Um, it's possible it didn't, and but the 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 previous plan also had plantings on the slope, also just above. We were only putting the rock at the bottom, and then the rest of the slope was going to be planted also hmm. in the previous version. So it's not too dissimilar okay. to the slope that was proposed. Well, we're going we're going to condition that the the plants have to you know have you know grow and have have a, a certain density to hold this, you know, together and that they have to last three growing seasons and we get a report every year. So if any of these plants don't work, you're going to have to swap them out with something that does and we'll make a, a then that would have to be a native species. So we could do that as a condition. We're happy to agree to okay. that. Okay. Okay. That was that was my concern. Chuck, okay. I see David White has his hand up. Yeah, thank you, Susan. Um, so, uh, hey, David uh, has his hand up. Let's um, go to David. I think some of these are cultivars. And definitely we want to try to use native plants where possible. I think that's in process, but I just mentioned that. Are you I'm proposing sorry. not to accept any cultivars in this planting plan? They should be swapped okay, out with your natives? I'm suggesting that we're not unless they have been proven to be beneficial to a habitat. I agree with um, David White. That's been our policy, and it's in our regulations. So, uh, yeah, I, I apologize again. I'm not a plant expert. I'm happy to agree to a plantings that are um standard practice for the, the board if, if these aren't here i'm not gonna i i can't pretend to be a landscape architect and i do apologize you couldn't make it but if that if that's the board's you know um thought process we're happy to change out any cultivars um for more native species if in that, our rigs too right sorry. we could we could condition that um the planting plan would have to be submitted to our agent for approval prior to installation to ensure that they're native straight species. We're happy to agree to that condition. Okay. Could I, Susan, can I modify that yep. condition to put sure. let's work on David? I would ask that the landscape, I suggest that, it's, that, the, that prior to construction, the landscape architect submit a letter to David Morgan saying uh, that these are all not cultivars and okay. that if any of them are, that she or he propose substitutes for that and that David therefore then reviews that and approves it. Sounds good. I mean, the burden's on the applicant in this case, not on David Morgan to figure it out. Good point. Is that okay with Carlton, the applicant? Uh, yes, we're, we're happy to agree to that. Thanks. Uh, I don't, so 
Good. I think see uh, Karen Grossman had a comment. If you're ready to go to public comment, I think there's something in the chat I saw pop up briefly. Sure. Uh, Karen, did you want to speak or is... Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so the uh, choir for Sheen along Spy Pond and, and adjacent to the park uh, was supposed to be planted with uh, seeds. It was not the... And then we were told that plugs would not work within the compacted choir for Sheen. And right now, <clears throat> a few years later, there's nothing growing out of the choir for Sheen. And um, so what's the difference in this case about um, the, how it would uh, ensure that as the choir for Sheen deteriorated, that um, there would actually be Nate you know, growth that would be um, holding the shoreline. <clears throat> What's the difference here, basically, is my question. And maybe um, David Kaplan could uh, comment. Because he knows Spy Pond Park. Sure. Um, I'll let... Carlton, maybe address that first, and then I could weigh in. Um, I'm not 100% sure what she's requiring to. I'm uh, referring to. I apologize, um, but the 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 bank stabilization here will be backed up with um, GeoGrid, and the the plantings will be monitored for three years to confirm they are established. Again, I'm not sure the other situation on how it was proposed. Yeah, and and Karen, my understanding the difference here it looks like this is sort of a sock filled with a soil or a planting media. I think which will be um, much more conducive to growing plants than a coconut fiber that may or may not wick up water to provide you know nutrients and a substrate for the plant material. So I, I think there's probably a much better chance that these plants will establish in this media versus a a choir machine. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions that, that come up? Seeing none, going back to the commission, do I have some more comments or a motion? I'd make a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Can I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. David Tapp, David Kaplan got that. Um, David White? Yes. Brian McBride? Yes. Susan Chapnick? Yes. Nathaniel Stevens? Yes. David Kaplan? Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. So the meeting's closed. Let's talk about conditions. Um, so I have written down a condition for New England wetland seed mix, three years of survivability with a density that has to be established. So I'm wanting a commissioner to tell me a density. Yearly reports, no cultivars and true natives. And then a condition, um, help me out with this, but I have prior to construction, a letter from an LA stating that the plants will be true natives. Uh, the plants will not be cultivars. If, I think there's a difference there. And that if any of them are, that they'll propose substitutions. And the plants yeah. will be, uh, will not be cultivars. Yeah, sorry, not be cultivars. Thank you. Right. Yeah, or straight not, native. I think that's... Straight native. Okay, that's what we're... Thanks. Straight native. Yeah. And that if any of them are on the existing plant list, they'll update the plant list and submit, and uh, David uh, Morgan will approve that, review and approve. Does anyone have a density, Susan? That was your comment. Did you have a density? Yeah, them? I don't really. The only reason I said that is because, okay, you know, we how many are being planted in there? And are you going to get it wasn't clear to me because that plant list was the plant list for the whole area. 
not just the plant list for these geotextile areas. So I don't have a sense of that it's going to fill up. Yeah, and we we don't necessarily know. Sorry to jump yeah. in. We don't we don't know what you know it, what we're relying on here to provide that stability. Is it going to be the plugs or what they plant in it, or is it going to be the seed mix? Just so the, I think right. we sort of have to. I think we just monitor it for stability after three years. I don't know if we can really get into density. Well, maybe it, we use the word stability. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, they are going to plant survive it. survivability. We do have that, but what about bank stability? I mean, if if some of them are falling off into the water, that obviously didn't work after three years, right? Right. Yeah, I don't think there's a way to mo monitor bank stability, and we do we do have a standard condition that says the the commission can add. We can require additional work to prevent you know, damage to resource areas. So if the bank starts to crumble like that, we have that authority. Okay. So I don't. So maybe I I'm I'm being overly cautious. Yeah. Right. No, I think it's a good point, but I think we have other different tools to deal with it. I just think it's really okay. hard to define define yeah. that in a concrete condition. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I I'm fine with leaving that out. Okay. Three years of survivability, yearly reports, and what was the term? Straight natives. That's right. And just a note on the three years, and the, 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 I guess another condition is the mitigate the the plantings. Of course, have to stay in place. That's a continuing condition. Right. Would that be sufficient to issue an order of conditions under the act and the and the bylaw with those conditions? Can I have a second? I'll second. David White seconds. Susan Chapnick? Yes. David Kaplan? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Brian McBride? Yes. Nathaniel Stevens? Yes. David White? Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. All right, Carlton. Thank you all for your time. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Thank you. Moving on to our next hearing tonight, which is um, Thorndike Place, TEP file number 910356. Uh, this is a continuation, although we're going to continue this, but this is a continuation from our June 20th conservation meeting. The Conservation Commission is still waiting for the response letter from our consultant, CZA. We received an email on July 10th, 2024, from Anthony Albano saying that, uh, letting us know that I started the work on the evaluation and the response letter, but is not completed, and that uh, Anthony will be on vacation and he will not have the response letter until July 25th or 26th. The applicant sent an email the following day on July 11th, 2024, and agreed to continue this hearing until August 1st, 2024, uh, for our conservation meeting on that date. And with that being said, can I get a motion to continue Thorndike Place, DP file number 910356 to August 1st, 2024? I'll make that motion. I will note if, it, if the applicant cares or not, I will not be at that meeting. I'll be on vacation. Can I have a second? I'll second. Second by David Kaplan. David White. I'm accusing myself from this some. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Missed that. David White's recused. Uh, Brian McBride. Yes. Susan Chapnick. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, let's continue to August 1st. And with that, we have completed our agenda. Are there any comments by anyone to att attending tonight's meeting? 
please use the raise hand function. Seeing none, any comments by the commission members? Motion to adjourn. Second. No second. second. Okay, we'll just wave. Unanimous. Good night, Thank you. Thank Good night, you. everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Bye now. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.